Good morning. I am Professor Jennifer Harrison Hauer, and this is week one of July quarter community health. Good morning. Okie dokie. So everyone, this is your orientation week. As I stated before, we have a hefty PowerPoint to cover. Please, 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 please ask questions. It is the same PowerPoint that we cover in our community health course this semester. So everyone's getting the exact same lovely treatment. Um, um, as I stated before, make sure you have your first and last name listed. Make sure I can see your faces. All of this is um, of course being recorded. All right, so I'm just gonna jump right into it. I'm still needing some folks, but um, Time waits for no one, so I am sharing my screen. Let's get to this PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. And I'm just adjusting some things around so I can see my screen. Everyone can see it? Yes, I'm seeing nodding of heads. All righty. So again, this July quarter orientation to online nursing. I am Professor Harrison Hauer. So a little bit about me before it started. Hopefully you guys have had a chance to review the announcements. Um, I know we send you out tons of stuff and I'm sure you have other courses as well but you wanna make time to make sure that you read. I mean, I know it goes without saying, but you actually wanna like read and highlight and print. I know in the beginning, you know, where, um, sorry, I'm admitting people. I know in the beginning, um, it's a lot of paper, a lot of trees or what have you, but whenever I started, uh, my nursing courses, and I started nursing back in, if you read my, if you read my bio, um, back in 1994, I would just print, and then whenever there was peace and quiet or whatever, I just would highlight and make notes, highlight and make notes, ask questions, that sort of stuff, because um, in the beginning, that's where you set your foundation, and you want to make sure that you have a um, a solid foundation, especially with like this slide saying with online learning. I know this is not your first online course, um, but again, it is a little bit different in how you want to um, set up your time, set up how you're going to study and all of that. As stated in the slides, um, I'm, I'm, I, I don't read slides to people. Um, because we all can read and who wants someone to read to them, right? So online learning, you're familiar with it, okay? And you know, it's totally different than traditional if you've ever taken traditional classes, like actually where you go to campus and what have you. Um, a lot of it is on you to, to carve out the time. I believe on your syllabi, um, Fortis expects you to do, um, to set aside like three hours specifically for this course every week to um, to focus on, study on, read, or what have you. There are some weeks where the chapters are light. There are some weeks, I'm always adjusting my screen. Okay, there are some weeks the chapters are heavy, um, but it is what it is. Your book does read to you, so just keep that in mind. But again, one of my favorite bullet points for this is that students are responsible to complete the required coursework every week, but also um, there's weekly homework, there's weekly learning activities. So every single week you have something that's being introduced to you. So before you know it, if you're not on top of your game, you're gonna get behind. And then when you get behind, it's just challenging to, um, it can be done, but set up your foundation. For example, as of this note, as of this time, I have received like maybe three responses to 25 people in my class. Um, and 
you may think, well, class started today. Well, no, class, no, the, the semester, the quarter, you guys have quarters, started Monday. So I should have received a hefty amount of emails from folks. And if you're asking what email, you have to read the announcements. So, and then um, anyway, you wanna create a study foundation in advance. These are contact numbers. I am your instructor as noted previously. And then we have a chain that we follow as well. So they want you to contact me first. All right. And then um, Dr. Lundy is actually over the community health instructors. So that's <clears throat> that's that for you. Her information is there. And then everyone should have heard about or received an email from Dean Brown, um, Dr. Brown, who's over all the online courses for Fortis or what have you. She sent an email out to everyone. So that's your that's your contact for you there. And then as well, it just goes through like for me, um, I am a full time nurse practitioner. So I am in clinic Monday through Thursday. Um, it doesn't mean I'm not available. But if I have a patient in front of me, I'm, I'm not responding to a message because, you know, that's kind of rude. Um, text is great. I may, you may find that I respond to you in form because if it's something that I feel that needs to be um, documented, then I am going to respond to you in form. So you want to make sure you check all of that. Um, we always, you want to contact me, sure, but then I'm always going to say, okay, did you, if it's something where I know it's on the syllabus, I'm like, did you read your syllabus? That sort of thing. If you have questions about projects, um, what have you, you can always contact me, but I am like, and I'm a mom as well of adult kids. I'm always going to bring you back. I'm like, okay, so if it's something I know that's on the syllabus or what have you, then I'm going to refer you back because we're going to be nurses very soon. Um, okay. So that's pretty much that slide. There's over, there's close to 60 slides. So we're going to get to this. When we're in, when we're in class and we're having conversations that may be passionate or I don't want to say heated or what have you, you always want to be respectful because we, um, everyone's opinions matter. Okay. And so it goes without saying that you want to be respectful to your peers. Of course, you want to be respectful to your, your professor. You want to make sure that everything that comes across, again, this is not your first online class with, with, with Fortis. Um, make sure your comments are kept to the topic. Um, we all have experiences and feelings and they're all respected. Um, it's a judgment-free zone in my class, but we want to be, you know, respectful to everyone and use appropriate language and all of that. Again, we're going to be launched into the nursing world very, very soon. So we want to be careful with our verbiage and all of that sort of thing. So then the online course schedule, um, let me just back up. It is currently six o'clock in the morning and 602 in Arizona. Arizona is one of, I can't think of another state. We don't spring forward. We don't fall back. We're on this, we don't move our time. So currently I am on California time, which is Pacific time. Um, and then Atlanta and where I'm from Florida, they're currently uh, three hours ahead. So again, when you're reaching out to me, be mindful of the times, but know that your homework is due, always due in Pacific time. The, the wonderful thing about folks that live on the East Coast is that, you know, technically 11.59 in California is 2.59 in the morning, but you don't ever want to get into the habit of, of turning in stuff at the last minute. One of my... Um, one of my favorite sayings is to be on to be early is on time, to be on time is late. 
be late is unacceptable. I borrowed that from someone, some show, I'm sure. But but again, you do have that, I don't know, Linus blanket, if you will. But things happen at last minute. It just does. You don't want to get it a habit. You don't want to pass meds late. You don't want to get people their insulin late. Just don't be late. All right. And then um, again, um, we meet Friday, um, exact same time, exact same place. And anything goes awry, comes up with me, hopefully not. I will let you know. I communicate through announcements, obviously. Uh, so, and again, we're talking about the discussion. You'll have discussion, three discussion um, questions. Your, your initial post is always by Wednesday midnight, which again, they're always referring to Pacific time, which is, you know, California and stuff. That's your initial, because folks got that, and you have to have two peer responses by midnight on Sunday, because folks got to have something to respond to. If you don't post till Friday, then no one, I mean, Ashley could be sitting there like waiting for someone to respond so she can do her post. So you want to knock your posts out sooner than later, you know, to be early. You want to respond. And for me, when I grade, I don't put feelings or emotions to it. I literally pull up the Rubik and see if you have everything I ask for. And so, um, that way, if you have questions, I, I go by the rubric. So you want your rubric with you. You want to include everything the rubric is asking for. Um, trust me, if you go on through with bachelors or masters, it gets more complicated. The, the discussion questions are tolerable. They really are. Okay. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. And that the due dates, everything... Again, I would have, if I were you, I would have my syllabus. I have my syllabus posted. You can't see, I have a screen posted in front of me. I keep it and every week I, I review it. I know what's on it, but I always look ahead because that way if you're working shifts or you're doing things, you can kind of plan. One of the students last semester asked if she can, um, last quarter, if she can work in advance. I'm like, you can work as far as you want, but <laughs> you want to make sure your grades don't, you know, anyway, enough of that. All right. Late work, they're really, really, really a stickler about it. I don't have a college or university, so I work for Fortis, which means I follow their policy. And me, I'm just, I'm just literally black and white. There's no taupe in my life. If they say that it's a deduction, then it is. Now, here's the thing. You again, you always want to submit your work on time. Late work is only accepted prior with approval by me. For instance, you do not want to email me on Monday and say whatever you want to say. Because to me, like the fluff is just fluff because I'm like, what? But you, you if you plan ahead and do your stuff ahead, you should never have to email me about late work, but things happen, things happen. And I'm not gonna give up examples because I don't want them to be used, but it has to be approved by me in advance, not just turning your stuff the next late. Um, you have to contact me. And that's the that's really what I've learned in the semesters, quarters I've worked with Fortis is that you gotta reach out to your, your instructors and communicate, communicate, communicate. I'm a huge, fan of communication. I don't read minds. And um, we're all busy. We have lives and stuff like that. And again, you have to communicate. There's folks from previous semesters I never heard from and did very well. There are folks I've, that I never heard from in previous semesters and didn't do very well. So I don't think that correlates to grading, but you, if there's anything that's going on that I need to know about, you need to contact me. That's just how it is. Um, and then, so I can only accept late work after I, I say, yes, that's that's fine, um, a week after. 
And then I just, I can't, it has to, I, I can't, I can't do it. And that's a policy. And then I get in trouble and it's not worth all that. Um, and so you have to attend on class, your class. Um, I've had students to say, I can't make it to Friday. Can I go to Wednesday? But that's not your class. So that will be counted as a zero because that's not your class. You can't just do that. Um, and then that's why this thing is recorded. I actually had can um, download from Zoom the list of names, when you logged in, when you logged out. I literally have to sit there and I turn in that log to attendance folks to your campuses, all of that. And I've had people say, well, she was blah, blah, blah. You should have deducted this, this, this. I'm like, God, she's like 16 minutes late. I do have a heart, but folks will correct my stuff. So um, they do in 15 minutes increments. It is what it is. So, all right. Attendance without posting, um, anyone without posting attendance 14 days in a row will be dropped without notification. Anything you see on these slides in red, they're not playing around. So that's that. All right. So it goes on. I turn it into the registrar. I have to do it every Friday after class. Um, again, it just goes more into the attendance poly. Early departures, tardies, and class cuts will be recorded. A period of less than 15 minutes will be counted as a quarter. It goes more into that. Most specifically, students with chronic absenteeism in excess of 20% of the scheduled hours or course may receive a failing or reduced grade for the course. And I will say this, Dean Brown, she, you don't, you, you wanna fly under her radar, not saying anything, any kind of way, but she literally will sit there and go through because she's supposed to, and she will get an email, such and such has um, exceeded the absenteeism, uh, in excess of 20%, they will receive, and you'll get an email from her. I will be emailing them on Monday to let them know that this, 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 and she's just giving the instructors a heads up. And if that's the case, I can't help you. So just come to class, make your life very easy. Um, again, we have some highlighted colored points, color points here. So students who are absent more than 20% of the scheduled time will receive a full letter grade deduction. Again. This is your college at the end of the term. That would kind of be, you know, sad to see if you're like doing everything, you're killing it, but you're not coming to class, which honestly doesn't make sense because most people that come to class do well. Anyway, um, the online office will pull attendance weekly. So like for if there's times I've had computer issues and I didn't post till Monday, not computer issues, but just technical stuff. And then I go out and start doing things and then I forget. And then I get an email, where's your attendance? So I, I have, again, I have myself set after class. I, just, I don't leave my desk until I do everything because when I get up, I'm gone. Um, and then it just goes more, I have to read some of this to you because again, this is being recorded. A student who is at 5% of scheduled time absent will receive an email from Campus View. And then a student who is 10% of scheduled time absent, and she will email you. No, she will, because she'll tell us, I am emailing um, such and such because of this, 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 and this. And she'll send it out to all the professors. She'll have a list of names. And then if you if she emails, me, emails you, that's like two supervisors or above me. I don't, I mean, you can email me, tell me about it, but it is what it is. So the level of intervention will be relying upon the amount of time missed and a student may not receive all levels of warning prior to missing the 20%. This is, this is her PowerPoint. So just come to class, make your life easy. Come to class on time, come to class early. I usually log in um, at least 15 minutes prior unless I'm doing, and I'll go into a little bit of other stuff, but I'm, I'm here. Um, so keys to access. You want to review your work that is due each week. It prior is what I would recommend. Prior. Because that's early, which is on time. 
not on time, which is late, and not reviewing your work late, which is unacceptable. Because then you got to like rush and do stuff and give me stuff that's not acceptable and all of that. So complete your readings. It's a lot. It's a lot. I've read your chapters. I read your chapters because I want to know what I'm talking about. Um, you can skim read and go back and read, read, and read, read. But the first time you sit down and try to do your work should not be the time that you want to read in advance. So you have an understanding of what's being asked of you. Um, there's assignments each week. There's, um, I don't know about interactive lessons. Oh yeah, there are interactive. They're talking about the CJ, CJ Sims. We'll talk about that. Come to class, um, read your directions and rubrics again. Your your syllabus and your rubric should be like always on your desk along with your 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 where well, your text is online. You know, those should always be somewhere near you. Um read the directions, feel free to ask questions. But again, know that if I'm in I'm in clinic, because I work full time there, I usually respond back in between patients if I have no shows, that sort of stuff. But I will respond back within 24 hours. I'm just like weird about that. Um, do your assignments, do your work, study, be successful nurses so I can retire one day. And um, again, you, you want to stay connected, not like we besties, besties and all of that stuff, but if things are that I need to be aware of, you want, you want to, you want to do that. Um, again, if I I will accept late work in advance most of the times. I'm not like a Scrooge or anything, but you have to communicate with me and let me know what's going on. And it can't be something chronic. Like I'm like, she's always turning in stuff late. I'm thinking of like, I don't want to be your patient. I don't like stuff late. Um, have a lie on internet because it's online. Um, maintain a schedule. That's really important, especially with the classes that you're taking. I know this is not your only course, um, you only didactic. So you 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 develop a schedule and you stick to it. Like Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday is community health. I don't know, you know, carve in 30 minutes a day. Like I said, your text will read to you, but somehow you have to set up a schedule that make, fits your world um, and your life. Have a quiet place. Some people can study in, in noise. I just never been one of those with stuff blasting. I got to have it like squeaky quiet, maybe like some soft music in the background, but like squeaky, squeaky quiet. I'm one of those type people. All of this just, ugh. okay. So you know what works for you or you should know what works for you. Log into class uh, four to five times a week. I can actually see, I can actually see who logged in when y'all logged in during the week, not just the messages that you send me, but I can actually see your your time that you log in and in, in to the to the forum. So, and it and it gives you like this. It gives us like this report, you know, like uh, an average like C or A, not a grade, but let's just say, um, you know, let's just say. Adriana, I can tell that she logged in five days out of the week, but Nisha logged in one day. Now, does that, you know, they both, let's say they turn in their work, but somehow for me, I see that it correlates to the folks that actually are logging in to the, to the campus. It, 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 I see that it actually makes a difference when I see that you're reading the announcements and that sort of thing. Um, submit your work on time. Don't procrastinate. Uh, they have a lot of slides about being successful, as you can't tell by now. So on day one, you want to log in. You should, I think everyone has logged in by now. I checked last night. Um, anyway, hopefully you've logged in by now. You want to look at your all of your announcements. This in the beginning is a lot. You know. If I highlight something, I mean, everything you want to read, but that's really important. Um, review your information. Everything that I stated back before, make sure you have your correct text, your correct everything, the addition and all of that. And if not, then I, you need to let me know so I can let somebody know. 
And then um, you want to be prepared. If there's anything like this, our, our time together, I mean, our time together, it goes by quickly because, you know, there's in-class stuff that we do. And so if you have questions and what have you, um, maybe someone else has questions on a certain topic or what have you, bring that, bring that to class. Um, let's have lively discussions and what have you. If there's any, as far as, if there's any difficult concepts or you need one-on-one, -on -one, I am available during office hours scheduled. So I usually I schedule my one-on-one um, -on -one an hour before class. So it'll be eight o'clock in the morning for, for you guys, usually in 20 or 30 minute increments, but you have to let me know in advance. If I don't have anyone scheduled, then I, I tend to log in like, 20 minutes early or what have you, but we can, we can totally do that. There's some other things I want to go over as well. Um, but I think this slide pretty much says it. And this, this entire slide pretty much goes over the fact that you want to, you, you definitely want to, again, they just keep harping on success because we want you to be successful, but there's, there's work on your part. There's work on my part because they're paying me. And, um, I enjoy public health because I'm actually able to use my MPH a lot more in this course or what have you. But but you have to do the part as well. Um, we do hold one-on-one um, -on -one tutoring. Again, my office hours are an hour before class. Just let me know. When you do, come, for me, when you do come to the one-on-one, -on -one, it's not a lecture there's something that we need to, to help you with specifically. Meaning, let's say I really just don't get, I know you went over in class, this and that. And I will break it down to a microcosmic level, but it's not a re-lecture because we have lecture in class. So when you come to your one-on-one, -on -one, I would expect that you've done everything you have to do your part and read. You have to do your part and listen to my recorded lectures. Um, you have to do your part and come to class on time. You have to do your work. You have to do your reading. You have to do your part so that when you come to the one-on-one, -on -one, it's not a re-lecture from beginning to where I say, okay. Um, and I'm gonna say Ashley because Mercer, because you're right underneath my, my picture. And that's why I keep calling on your name. And I have the screen like kind of like this and like, okay, Ashley, what, what can we help you with today? What's going on, dear? I don't understand. I don't understand what all of it. No, we're not doing that. No. So don't come to one-on-one -on -one with, with that. You have to do your part. You have to do your part. All right. And then I am happy to just. Okay. So the graded component again, um, you have to get a 80% on your, your keys, your, your unit exams, okay? There's three of them and they're 60% of your grade. And then you have your, your community, your HESIs, which is 20, which is your 80% before anything else is even touched or thought about to begin with. Did they change it from 78 to 80? It's 80%, 80% of, it's 80% of your grade comes from the KGAs and you have to get a 78%. I'll break okay. it down. Oh, okay. They didn't change it. They didn't change it. I get you. No, it's all, it's all good. I, I would have worded it differently. It's not my PowerPoint. So yeah, they didn't change it from two weeks ago from when we had our last thing, okay. And then, so, and then your homework comes in. And I'm not gonna give examples, but I'll just keep it real basic at this point because we still have some PowerPoint slides to go. Um, but if you don't get a 78% average out of your KGAs, then nothing counts is, is the bottom line before they even turn on homework even matters. Um, 
the homework is turned off currently. Um, and I won't touch the homework scores. I'll leave them off. So you still, you know, you submit your stuff, um, but it's not factored in when you see your grade. Week six, they require me to turn it on like a, like a peekaboo. So I turn it on, let you see. It's almost like a teaser, but again, it's not my college. Then I have to turn it off. I have to remind myself, turn it off. Um, and it stays off until it needs to be turned back on. I think after it has, to, yeah, homework so will stay off until after it has the exam is remediated. And she got exclamation marks. So it is what it is. So here we go, Miss Miss Haley. Your combined score on all unit exams and special exams, HESI, in the course must be 78% or above um, before any credit for a completed homework is given. And all that means is, let's just say you have um, on your three exams and your HESI, you have an average of 77.7, .7, then you didn't pass the course. It doesn't mean it matter if you got 100% on everything else. So you can also not pass with homework if you don't do your, so let's just say you have, and I don't, these are rough. I am not a calculator. Let's just say you have a 79 point, I, I don't even want to think like that, but let's just say you have a 78.1. So like, okay, but we turn on the homework and you didn't do nothing, then <laughs> it gonna drop it back down. Just, just do your stuff, just do your stuff. Let's do your stuff. As most of you know, and I'm I'm just talking history. I was an LPN. I was like, oh, this is hard. And I was an RP, RN associates. I'm like, oh, this is hard. And then I did my bachelor's. I'm like, oh, this is hard. It's just, just, but I passed everything and I never remediated. And I just studied and studied until it clicked when I asked questions and I kept it moving. And that's what you want to do. So again, 78%. So then the exams are, are the same as before, where we, 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 it's during class, it's with me, it is your class. Students will ask, do we have class after? No, that is your class. Because some folks are finished in 30 minutes and make an A or not. So I've seen that like, wow, they're done quickly. They scored very well. Oh, they're done quickly. They didn't score very well. And some folks take the entire class, which you can certainly do. And that is your class. So do not email me. Well, you can email me if you want. But I'm like, just remember, when you're done, you're done. Enjoy your day. If you're done in an hour, you're done in an hour. Yay. If you're done in an hour, whatever it is, it, it you're done. That's our class. And even for the, um, so that's three times that we have the exams in class and that's, that is your class. And then our lecture for the next week is like, just like this week, we have to add week one and two, which is fine. Um, and then this just goes into all of that, which again, you've done this before. Um, read the exam carefully, make sure that you begin when you're ready. Um, you'll bring, I'll, I'll, there's a huge announcement, but just like in previous classes, you'll come in, you'll have your ID, you'll have to show me your surroundings, all of that fun stuff. Um, you're only allowed one attempt. You cannot stop, pause, and resume. Ms. Henley, you have your hand raised. How may I help you? Yes, um, I just have one question about the testing. Go back? No, good. No, no ma'am. Um, how long is the turnaround for us to know our grade? Oh, yes. Bless your heart. Whenever <laughs> I almost gave you the answer, I didn't want to get. So we as um, good question, as the community folks have to get together. OK, so first we everybody has to take the exam. So we. There's a class Friday morning, which is us. And then there's Friday evening classes. Which is 6 p.m. Eastern. And I think there's two sections of that class. So nothing's gonna happen Friday. Then we all got to get together Saturday morning and do our, our thing as instructors. I'm not gonna get into all that because whatever. And then I, I try to post them by Saturday evening, the latest. 
um, I cannot post until everybody's taking their exam. So if they're taking their exam from six to uh, seven thirty Eastern, that's ten thirty to me. Then I'm in bed. Then I get up Saturday morning with everybody and we do our thing and then we post. Should be post by noon Saturday. You know, people have live stuff to do and got to get together and by Saturday evening, but I try to have it by Saturday noon, my time, <laughs> my time. Um, Cause I know you guys want it and I'll get emails that I pass. I'm not, I'm, I'm probably not gonna respond to that email until after I send it. Cause I'm like, I got 24 hours. So you can I always, you can email me to your heart's desire, but you know, if folks are still scheduled to take it, at 6 p.m. Eastern, I, I can't even really mess with it. I can look and look at raw stuff. Of course I can. And I can maybe possibly put you out of your misery, but I'm not going to do it because I said, wait, <laughs> so you can wait. <laughs> um, if you have technical difficulties, please don't have technical difficulties. It's a whole thing. Then it has to go to, I want to say Dean Brown because we have to call this 1-800 number. It's like, make sure you have good Wi-Fi, some of the folks from last semester, they went into their campus to take it. I don't know how they did it or whatever, but uh, Wi-Fi is not an excuse. They get real funny about that stuff. Uh, pay attention to your time. And then um, if you need accommodations, notify me um, in advance. Just email me your, your, your paper. That's fine. Um, so I can make sure it gets to the proper people. And well, anyway, just email me. Um, I just said it's held during the time, not taking an exam during scheduled class time will result in an absence. Lecture time is not able to be made up. Exams can only be proctored with a faculty member on campus with 72 hours notice. It must be done during the scheduled time. So that means if you, if you need to go on campus to do it, again, it starts with me and then I send it all the way up to Dean Brown and she does whatever she does. But um, she's a, anything in red that she's put here, she's not playing with that. So, you know, if you already know you want to do this, exam three is, exam one is a couple of weeks, just email me so I can send it up to people. Um, again, same thing as you, if you, as you've experienced before, nothing has changed. This always, this goes over how the exam will be. And again, we just went over that. I'll need to see your ID. You just show me your stuff. Um, you can't, you're, you guys have done exams um, before. It's, it's the exact same way. No paper. Um, I let people use paper if you show me front and back, but it's technically, they really want you to use an eraser board. But anyway, we'll cross that when we get there. Your ears cannot be covered people have ways of like doing stuff technology I thought I was good with technology but I've heard things I'm like really is it can't cheat in real life missed exams will be held to the late work policy exams missed without prior notes be given at zero personal reason may result in a late penalty exams missed so so what this slide pretty much means is that you start with me and I've never had this happen, but I literally just forwarded Dean Brown, please read below and advise and out of my hands. So just come to class, take your exam sometimes. Be done with it. Um, any issues, again, contact me. Um, contact me, contact me, contact me. Uh, after contacting me, after you have submitted your exam, has removed any ability for us to work with you. We want you to be successful. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Contact me. All right, homework assignments. So again, planning, 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 planning. Everybody has a different life. We all have different things that we want to do. Oh, okay. Um, Sorry, you guys, I'm looking at um, text messages. So I usually go through without a break. If you need to go to the bathroom, just like I've got in these text messages, text me when you leave. I know it sounds like pre-K, but it is, again, everything's recorded, everything. 
text me when you leave. Nobody else sees it if you if you do it right. <laughs> text me that you're going to the bath or taking a break or something. And you got to text me when you come back because I got to calculate all this stuff. Um, I usually go straight through so that we can be done a little bit early. All right. But a nurse for almost 30 years, I have a bladder of steel. All right. Plan your time. Review your syllabus. Highlight. Plan what you're going to do. You know that, you know, every week may be different from you. This day you work this shift, that shift, this thing, what have you. When you have your hefty projects, start early. There's group projects in here. Contact folks early. Um, I'll get into all of that in a minute. Um, but start early. Organize yourself. Complete your readings. I always say complete your, I always say look at your syllabi so you know what chapters. Um, do your readings. Look at the recordings. Dive in. That's probably, but you can do whatever works for you. Um, this slide is a sample of someone's, how they organize. I know folks have organizers on, on their phones and stuff. I'm still old school and I have a planner. I like to see what I'm looking at and read it and highlight it. Whatever works for you. You can have sticky notes all over the place. But again, this is a sample. And I'm like, again, on your syllabus, I want to say that they they expect you to, to, to carve out three hours specifically for this course. Include That includes like reading and all of that. And then again, she there's a late work policy in your catalog. She has the page number. We're talking about late policy again. So that means it's really important that you know that it will not be accepted without prior approval from me if the instructor approves it. If the instructor approves it, then we go, I have, still have to deduct. So, and points matter. So you, they do add up. Um, I am required to have your grades completed by Tuesday, midnight Pacific time. So what happens is what I do is that, um, I post the grades if I don't receive them is an automatic zero. I haven't heard from you. I don't know anything. You haven't told me anything. I just assume you just didn't do it because you have to communicate with me because I'm not going to wait. I'm I'm to be early is on time. I, I post my grades by Monday, Tuesday, well, Tuesday the latest. If you haven't, you've done it, you've done it. If you haven't done it, you haven't done it. Tuesday midnight, if I haven't heard from you, then you haven't done it. So then um, we get into our NCLEX and it talks about that as well. The purpose of the NCLEX practice exam is to prepare you to sit for the actual NCLEX. And then again, if you've done them before in previous classes, it hasn't changed. You have to um, open the, open and follow all of the instructions and it, it gives you the specifics on how to do that. Um, any technical questions or what have you, I'm happy to answer, but usually I just route you up to, to IT or what have you. Um, this goes into it as well. You have to access it from, um, from your course. And then, and I've done it as well. It's just really easy. You just follow the prompts. Once submitted, the score you submitted will be the score you receive. You can re repeat the questions as many times as you like to receive the highest score. So I think what they're saying there is that I I've done the practice ones. I think you can practice all day long, if I'm not mistaken. But once you submit it, you're done. So I guess how I would look at it is, is that I think 50 is the highest. So if you're getting 30s and 40s, don't submit it. <laughs> Just keep doing it if you want to. I mean, you can submit. I've had folks submit 38. My like, why? You could have gotten a 50. Just keep redoing it. But once you submit it, it's, it's, it's done. So this is an easy, easy one. Just keep, if you have the time, hopefully you get 50 the first time. Um, utilize the course text. So you can use your text. You can online resources and reference. You can use all of that. All right. Percentage score applied to the total assignment points available. Completion documentation required. So screenshots are not acceptable. 
there's a report that it gives you exactly what it's called. Um, that's what I need. So it's 50 questions, one point per question. If, uh, if you submit the required 50 points and have 40 correct, you will receive 40 points or 80%. It tells you the points that you receive. But what I'm saying is that if it allows you to repeat, 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 why not repeat, repeat, repeat till you get all 100%? So this is new. This is new to me. This is new to Dean Brown. This is new to Fortis. Don't be scared. Have you guys um, received any information about CJ Sim that it was coming? Okay. I had to take uh, uh, an online course, not course, class for instructors or meeting or whatever you want to call it for a couple of hours. Not too long ago, I did the practice and all of that. I like it. They, and, and they have their reasons for doing it. I think it's I think it's great. This will support the development of the application of knowledge acquired to take the specialty exams and boards. I say that it's new, meaning that it's new to me as well. Um, I have access to uh, to look at what you guys have done and what have you. And there's a section that I'm going to require you to do, you don't get any points for it. That's a practice component. Do the practice component before you actually do the assignment. You can do it once. I think you can do it many times. That way you know what buttons and you don't, it doesn't take off from you. You know where the buttons are, you know what, what you can practice on it all day long before you dive in it and something become and, and you submit it and you could have gotten a higher score if you would have practiced with a sample patient. I would recommend that you do that. And so you have to go through your course to access it, just like everything else. Um, and then you follow the instructions. I, again, I did the sample one. I think it's pretty straightforward, a real, realistic um, case. Uh, I think it will be beneficial. I really, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys, how you respond with it. The, um, the case studies must be accessed through the Canvas. We, we just said that. Case studies accessed through your nurse think account will not be accepted without prior written approval by the National Dean of Online Nursing, Dean Brown. So do it through the Canvas. Just do it through the Canvas module, keep your life real simple. You can complete the uh, practice case studies to beginning as mandatory. You want to do that. Grades will automatically transfer to your grade book. You don't have to do a thing. Well, you have to do it, but it, it transfers over. You don't have to send me a report. Um, access is required through the campus course module link. Well, they just said that. Only complete the case study for the link assess. I can just see this happening. I know it's not going to be my class. Somebody's going to do a different case. And like, I, I did it. I'm like, no, you didn't. You didn't do the right one. You did something else. So <laughs> look at your syllabus and see what's due. There's a reason why we have certain ones assigned for community health. And they have certain ones assigned for med surge or psych or peds. We're not doing peds. We don't do babies in this course. So you can do it you do something else and it's just, it's just you're not going to get credit for it and then you'll get a zero and mm, mm, just just do the the one that you're supposed to do um completing other cases studies that this time result in lower grades and as well as missed attendance and all this other stuff so oh it says screenshots must be submitted as stated in the directions your name must show up to verify its completion now, this is something I didn't know. I thought you guys could automatically transfer into the grade book. I think it automatically does transfer into the grade book, but they want us to do, I'll, let me clarify that. Screenshots must be submitted as stated in the directions. Okay, follow the directions. Follow the directions. If they're saying they want you to do the screenshots, I think the grades automatically submit through, but they're wanting screenshots as well. Take your time with the first one. Once you guys get the first one done, it will 
it will flow. We do have several of them. Access by any other method will result in a zero for the assignment. Okay. When you get into your CJ sim, follow the directions from beginning to end. If you have any questions, let me know. Like I said, do that practice one case prior. It's like three or four minutes because it's not like trying to give you the whole thing just to kind of make sure you know where the buttons and everything are. So you want to do that. Um, let me get to them. Um, yeah, I've been writing papers and discussion posts. So the paper assignments will guide the development of the professional goals related to the profession. Your, I'll get into the syllabus, but your, you have an assignment due by Sunday. Um, review and follow the instructions. Look at your rubrics for your um, for your papers. Um, again, I this is what I'm looking at when I'm I'm grading. I'm not even looking at your name. I'm gonna be honest with you. I just literally like look at the rubric and I put the points in. Yeah, so follow the rubric. You wanna use the current APHA, APA, APHA. Nursing journals, you wanna use credible sources, no wikis. You wanna use current relevant evidence-based, blah, blah, blah. When you're doing your stuff, I mean, you, you're telling me information that I that I'm to believe from a credible source, if that makes sense. It's just like if you and I were sitting together and like such and such and such and diabetes based on the diabetes association. Don't give me wiki stuff. You want to give me, you want to back it up with some proof. The proof is in the pudding. Um, no more than five years old because anything outdated is not relevant and current. Um, that's why, you know, what, again, I'm gonna talk a little bit about COVID a second. That's why folks are like, you know, all this evidence that's coming out now because it's current and relevant because it didn't exist 10 years ago. So it's like, we're getting all this information. Um, summarize your points, follow the, seriously follow the, the instructions and the rubrics, you will not go wrong. Um, it may not seem like they are worth a lot of points, but I'm telling you, everything is worth, it, it'll matter when it matters. So you don't wanna be scrapping for points at the end of, end of the semester. That's just a sad thing to see. I'm like, oh, I can't go back and give you that. You should have just do your work, fly under the radar, come to class, all that stuff. Um, give your rationale. Exactly. Everything that's asked for, just, just do it. And then you, again, I don't know why we're talking about exams again, but I guess we are. Um, the time, you can only complete it once. We already said that before. So then I guess they want to harp on the technical issues. So technical issues do not continue or try to continue. If you're having technical issues, notify me. Um, well, I have to verify things. I have to review things. Um, I will not, things faculty will not do is allow a retake of exam due to technical problems or other physical or emotional issues when the majority of all questions have been answered by the student or timed out. It literally just fa factors up to, goes up to Dean Brown. It really does. And she decides. Uh, I can't take a swig. So um, your special exams are given on campus. I have absolutely nothing to do with when, how, who, how, who you take your HESIs. Just know that in advance. Um, that's all your campus. And they, everybody, there's many campuses from Richmond to blah, blah, blah. And they decide who, what, how, why, who, who. So, but that is considered your attendance for that week. So I will know, because I have I have a way of knowing if you took it. And when you do, I give you credit for attendance that week. That's how you get your attendance that week. Um, and then when you do your remediation, I give you attendance. Anyway, there is only one attempt at the HESI. You will have an assigned date and time. This is your 20% uh, 20 of your... KGA, the other part of it. The benchmark is 900. I've seen folks have thousands, so you can do it. 
And then these, you'll see this again. Um, I'll have it posted in an announcement, I'm sure of it, closer to this time. It is mandatory. I'll see your scores, but I'm not allowed to put the score in the school book until I've seen you do the remediation. The required number of hours. I have to actually go in and check to see you've done your hours and your packets. I have to do all of that. And then I put your grade. So remediation is mandatory. You receive your score. It counts. Uh, remediation consists of completing 100% of the time. If it says you need, if you scored 800, you need three hours, not 2.47. It does, I do have to calculate all that. Time should be spent over all concepts and learning gaps. We'll worry about HESI when we get there, but just know that there are required number of hours based on your score. Their uh, packets are to be submitted by 12 p.m. Pacific time, Monday of week 12. Um, failure to complete 100% of remediation will result in HESI score of zero. I've had folks to not do their mediation. I know you're like, why? I don't know why. I don't remind, remember? And so I had to put a zero for their HESI. Because everybody, you know, again, every I am checked, everything is checked. Um, you guys are doing fabulous. Exam security, again, they want your school badge, preferably. Must be on camera at all times. I've had folks to where it's like, I can't see you. And then one of the things I'm like this, I'm like, make sure your face is visible at all times or what have you. I mean, I don't like emailing, uh, sending folks messages when they're trying to do a test. I'm like, I can't see you. Like they'll have it like this or something. That is my, and I'm like, I can't see you. Adjust your screen. So just make sure I can see you guys. Um, again, everything is recorded and sent in. So All right. we can read that. We're almost done with that, I promise you. And then you just want to know, are you prepared? What mediation could your online instructor review with you? Again, um, I, I'll schedule things prior to class, bring concepts. I will say this. In advance, I can 99.9999% tell you that you're going to see math. It is not a math class. I sent out math information way early so that you guys can have it. If math is not your thing, you want to practice every week. You want to somehow make time to practice. All of that information I sent you for week one um, was sent by Dr. Brown, Dean Brown. And there's actually, uh, I think, a lecture a couple of hours long that the YouTube video that she taught math you may not want to do all of it but I actually I got through like an hour I'm like okay I get it and she really just kind of microscopically just really just breaks down how to convert this over to that but you're going to see I can almost guarantee you unless they change things and I don't know that you're going to see math and so it's enough that I get every single week get these concepts into you guys. So math is not taught. So you wanna make time for it. You wanna make time for it. Um, and actually that's your PowerPoint. Questions, you can unmute yourself, but in the meantime, get out your syllabi, please. Any burning questions? And before I get, I'm, I'm gonna go over what I have as my roster while you guys get out your syllabi. And then let me know if there's a specific name. How am I, let me know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. If you want an, another name you wanna go by, et cetera, et cetera. All right, I'm trying. Geta Adekari. Yes. You, would you, you name correct? Name. Everything correct? Yeah, it's Gita Adekari. Okay, Lashana Arnold Smith. Yes, ma'am. Ashley Blair Cunningham. Yes, ma'am. Abigail Button or Bouton? <laughs> it's Button, like a button on a shirt. Like a Bouton. I was going to put a little. Chicka, 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 chicka. All right. Haley Clift. Here. Mika Dowdy. 
It's uh, Micah. Micah, no, get straighten me out, Mike. Uh, Micah. Okay, I just wrote it out the way, the way I can understand it. You don't want to see how I wrote it out, Micah. You're good. Everyone said like that's the most common way uh -huh. to say it. I got it now, Micah. Yeah. Katie Eden. Katie Eaton, going once, going twice. Alu Watinola, Falaya, Falayi. It's Tenny. Sorry? I, I go by Tenny. Oh, you're Tenny. Yeah. Now you would have gotten me in some serious trouble. There's no way I would have gotten Tenny. <laughs> Pronounce your yeah. first name for me. It's Oluwa Teniola. <clears throat> Oluwa Teniola. Mm. Yeah. Okay. You sure you want a Tenny? I will figure out how to pronounce. I'm All right, positive. Tenny. Yeah. All right, Tenny, it is Tuana Henley. Tuana? Tuana. Ty, Ty Hana. Yes, Ty Hana. Ty Hana. Okay. Kimberly Huff? Yeah. Kimberly Huff? That's good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sean Jones? Yeah, that's right. Jessica Labrie? Yes, here. Shaka McKayer? Here. Ashley Mercer. Here, 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 here. And Gregory Mercer. Here. <clears throat> Any relation? Yeah, husband and wife. Oh, interesting. Same room? Same. Yep. Okay. Anisha Odari. Anisha Odari. Yes, I'm here. Oh, you just have a cell phone. Cassidy Paul. I'm here. Adriana Ramirez. Adriana Ramirez. I'm here. Okay. Ruby Says. Here. Daryl Sims. Good morning. Good morning. There you are. Okay. Krista Singleton. It's Kirsta, but I'm here. Is it Kirsta? Yes. It is Kirsta. I actually wrote Kirsta on my screen, but for some reason I wanted to change your name. Kirsta Singleton. All right. Kimberly Smith. Kimberly Smith. Kimberly. Do I have a Kimberly Smith going once? All right. And then Durga Subedi. Yes. Did I pronounce your name correctly? Yep. Emily Wilson. Here. Tuana Wright. Here. All righty. Everybody have their syllabi. All right. Let's get to it. All right. So, where do I go? Oh, let me do this. Hang on. I have it printed out as a backup. So, where do I want to start? All right, we talked about the um, KGAs. There's something. So you wanna make sure you have your current 2018 Foundations of Population Health and Community Public Health Nursing, sixth edition. We have our Nurse Think. We have our Strategies for Student Success in CLEX. This item, da -da 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 reference package. 
So the grading is listed, the grading scale is listed for you here below, and it correlates to quality points listed next there for you. You have that. To successfully complete a nursing course, the student is required to achieve a minimum composite test score of 78%, average of test scores, key graded assignments, and a minimum of 78%. Overall course grade includes the course assignments that are not key graded. All of that means is that you have to pass the KGAs first, turn on the homework scores. I have had people do not pass because once we turn on the homework score, it drops it because they're so on the edge. You don't want to be on the edge. I would say if I had to like say it, I would want to go into to HESI with like a solid 85 or higher. But again, so you don't have to sweat it, but okay. All right, so then again, listed for you, your unit exams, your community nursing HESI. We have your vulnerable population assignment. We have your professional development plan. We're gonna go over all of these into detail here talks about the um, benchmark of 90, 900 on the HESI. Um, there's something, maybe uh, make sure you're, again, drilled into you about the late, ho hopefully you'll never have to need this late homework policy, like ever, ever, ever. And so they have listed the estimated number of hours. That's what I wanted to show you guys here for your entire course. They're expecting you to to spend 10 hours reading, 15 hours on the NCLEX questions, the CJ Sim, the Vulnerable Pop, the Professional Development, all of that, their estimating number of hours is 40 hours. That's like a whole work week. So that's why like for me, I'm a stickler on like, if we come into tutoring, that means I have an expectation that wherever you are in the semester, you've done X amount of this, and you've done X amount of that. Um, not deterring anything, but when we come into tutoring, it's going to be like concentrated and focused on what we need to get get an understanding of, but not a re lecture to where you haven't done your stuff. We don't want to. We don't want to do that. Um, so, so again, that's what your 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 college is expecting that by the time you're done, you've done a full work week on just this course. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. So week one, I've already received some professional development plans. They're due by the end of the week, 11.59 specific time. You wanna review the, uh, go to the, they want you to start becoming familiar with the, the Healthy People uh, website because it really is something that you'll see often and we'll utilize and we'll reference to. Just pick a topic and just become familiar with it. You can pick school health, you can pick whatever you want. And, and there isn't anything due at this time, but if they're already putting it on your, on your syllabi for week one, they want you to like go in and start becoming intimately familiar with healthy people, all right? I remember Healthy People 2000. I know. I remember a lot of stuff. So you have your reading. So how it, so week one, all right, there's the topics of what is going to be covered. Now we got to do week one and week two next week. So it's going to be, that's how it is when we have our, um, like an orientation or we have, we're going to have a HESI review in class. The next week we kind of have to make up for stuff. It is how it is. Yes, Miss Wright. So the healthy uh, website will be able to access it through this syllabus, or how 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 are we accessing? You should. This I website? mean, if it's highlighted there, that means they should they should be able to access it through the link that's listed here mm -hmm. for you. Because everything, okay. yeah, yeah, and then also what I do, not necessarily. I mean, because you you can if it's highlighted, that means it's a link for this but i go through your i go through the modules okay go the modules for everything i'm actually just okay. going over the syllabus so there's several different ways but what i usually would recommend is that whatever week you're on 
you go to that particular, I mean, you go to your syllabus, you look and see what's what what's coming. Okay. Yeah. And then you go to that module and you go for it. Yeah. Yeah. I have never tried to from the what from this um syllabus. I print it and I make notes for myself as an instructor. And then I just have it with me like my Bible. And then I just go to your modules and I go from there. But yeah, you should be able to. That was a long answer, but there you go. So for this week, you have chapters that you need to have completed. And then remember, our, just because our class meets on Friday, you don't have to wait till Friday to start stuff. I'm just looking to see. Does anyone else? Oh, okay. Let me see. Hang on. Okay. All right, so yeah, so then your professional development plan, follow your rubric. I've already had uh, received several. So that's, why do I have a, hang on a second. Okay, and then for week two, so, so mm, how I do it is, and again, this is just me, but I actually will write in, I don't know, you're not gonna be able to see my paper, this is how I'm a visual person. And so I have things, I have to see it. So for me, I actually write down and, and this is my suggestion that I did, but I guess everybody does things differently, but I actually write down the beginning of the date, the date of the beginning of the week. So I wrote down July 10th through July 16th. That's just for me. So that I know in advance when the week starts and when the week ends. I just like to see it. So that's a suggestion that you can totally think about so that you already know that by July 16th at 11.59 specific time, you should have stuff done. So I like, I like dates. That's just how I am. So then week two, you have your very first discussion question. You have your NCLEX questions and then you have your first cj sim so that would tell me that before next week which starts soon i would at least have done the practice one so you're familiar with it that's just me and then that's july 17th through july 23rd you can do your dates later you don't have to put your dates in i like dates you have your readings okay and then you have, um, well, you have your concepts, your readings, and then you have your assignments, assessments, and your assignments. Then week three, we have our exam one, which if I can add correctly, will take place on July 28th during our class. You have your case studies. I will assign groups um, for your case studies and your groups will be the same ones that you stay in for your assignments. I'll break you guys out into like workout groups during class, but that's not your, that's different. But your, whoever, when I assign you, I've already started working on it. When I assign you your groups, then that's what you'll stay on. There's two group assignments, the healthy people and the vulnerable. No, something else. I got to look at it. <laughs> but then you have another CJ Sim, which is mental health, uh, Mike Kennedy. Okay. Any questions so far? Your unit, we'll go over this a little bit more, what chapters are covered, but it'll be one, two, and three. But again, we'll we'll delve into that more next next week. Let me just go through the go through this because time is getting away from us. And and then for week four, all right, you have you 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 have the topics that'll be covered. There's the, that's my concepts recordings. And then in class, what I usually like to do is different activities, different different things for us to kind of focus more on these concepts and really get an understanding of it for that particular week. So next week you'll have your one and two that I'll talk about and go over in class and um, 
we'll talk about some more. So then you have your, um, your leadership scenario with Sam Good. That's your CJ Sim. So some weeks look a little bit lighter that you have just one, your CJ Sim and you're done. This is the time to, to I don't wanna say work ahead, but some weeks I notice are lighter and some weeks are, are not so light. So this is, a, this is a nice little break, I see it. Week five, again, we'll cover our concepts, environmental health, epi, occupational health, readings, light readings this week. Then you have discussion question two. Your NCLEX 50 questions, and then you have another CJ Sim where you're talking about outpatient and community, and we're dealing with Ezekiel Baptiste. So, so again, when you it's there's a lot of scenarios listed. It's easily picked the wrong one. I know it's not going to happen. So just make sure there's a reason why they assigned the scenarios. I don't assign, they assigned it for our all community health students. So you wanna make sure you have that completed as well. Um, you can utilize, one of the things that they mentioned and I think it's a great idea, you can use your textbooks. You can use whatever resource you need for, for any of this, for your, of course, for your discussion questions, your NCLEX, you can have anything you want out, not for the test, <laughs> but, I would have, if I'm doing a, if, if it was, if it was I, and I am, uh, I have a scenario with Zico Baptista, my mind, I try to, I try to think logically, not works out sometimes, but there's a reason why they have the readings and everything for this. So that means I am assuming that it's going to be relevant and pertinent to my CJ Sim for that week. Does that make sense? Or not? You can utilize whatever resources you need. But for me, I would I was like, hmm, this is week five. So maybe they're gonna, I'm gonna need the environment, the chapter eight, 10, 32, or what have you from the prior week. So you can use your text. It's, you totally can use any of that. It's not a crime. And then for week six, um, making sure I don't have any hands up here. Okay, so week six, will be your exam two in class. That will be your class. And when it's done, it's done. Um, but you also have discussion three. So I consider this a light week because you just have the discussion three and you know an exam. Um, exam two will cover everything up until from exam one, but I'll break down the chapters and everything for you guys. And then for week seven, you have, um, your discussion question four, which is your, um, the discussion question four is, is actually a group project, um, infectious disease. And then you actually have to do a peer review. Again, there's um, a rubric for all of that, but it's a separate submission. So you do your discussion questions with your group. Everyone's group project should look the same. You'll submit it individually. So for example, if um, Ashley, Adriana, and who's the next person? Haley are in a group, which they're not because, um, anyway, if they're in a group, then their work should look the same because it's a group effort. And you guys wanna contact each other early and be nice to each other and all of that fun stuff. I should not receive emails that Emily hasn't responded to me. Gita hasn't responded to me. I'm doing all the work by myself, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Everyone gets, I don't want to say the same grade because you have your discussion questions and then you have to respond. But your project should be the same because everyone has the exact, you know, you work together as a group. Yes, Miss Ashley Blair Cunningham. So on the CJ Sims, do we only get one attempt for those? You only get one attempt for those. Yes, ma'am. For the CJ Sims. I'll triple check, but that's what I have in my in my notes. We're all learning with the CJ Sim this semester. My thing is always that with the CJ Sim, they mention uh oh, stop it. Um 
they mentioned the that's why I want you guys to do the practice one in advance. I'll triple, triple check, but I have it in my notes one attempt, but I'll I'll check again. Maybe I was writing something else down. But I think you just get the one, the one attempt. It's not heavily weighted. Doesn't mean you don't, you know, you don't want to what have you. Um, but I'll triple check for you guys to make sure. Um, so this question, the, that's your, just your group project. And so anytime you have your group projects, you want to contact each other early. I, I have a preliminary groups assigned, but I was waiting until, you know, just the final to see who's here is not, who switched over. Oh, and by the way, was there anyone whose name I did not call? Because they're still switching people around on our, on our, on our rosters. Okay, I think I have everybody. Anyway, so then, yeah, you want to get in touch with each other early and um, work together. How you divide up the work, I don't micromanage that. Again, group dynamics. So week eight is a lot of reading. It is what it is. You have your NCLEX uh, questions again. You have another CJ Sim scenario, Gabe is an ED charge nurse. And then for, I'm trying to move these screens out of the way so I can see people's faces. All right. And then um, week nine, you have your last unit exam in class. And you also have your vulnerable populations assignment. These, that's an individual assignment. Week 10 is actually weeks 10 class. So after, uh, let me go back here. After week nine, there's nothing else that I introduce chapters wise. Um, Keep that in mind. We still have one more official class, but after week nine and you do your unit exam, there is no new information that is being introduced. You still come to class. Week 10, the entire class is the HESI review. They'll give me this PowerPoint that the entire class is me doing a HESI review with you, all right? So that's your week 10. You do have an NCLEX one, we gotta go out with a bang, one final NCLEX that's due for week 10, all right? And then you do your HESI during your week 11, your HESI exams on campus that's scheduled for you. And make sure that week 12, you complete your remediation. And I actually have to post an attendance for week 12. We do not meet week 12. I repeat, we do not have a class. There is nothing for me to teach you <laughs> for week 12. I will put a grade in once I see that you've done all your stuff. I remember I didn't, I forgot, or I didn't think I needed to or something. Sometimes I have these brain fogs and I received an email from Dean Brown. You didn't post a tenant for week 12. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, all right, sorry. <laughs> and so I look back and I saw that. Okay. So if you don't do your remediation, that is considered a zero for that attendance, if that makes sense. So even though we don't see each other's face-to-face, -face, it doesn't mean because it's 12 weeks, so I was like, oh, sorry, I forgot or slipped or I don't know, didn't think I had to or thought somebody else was gonna do it. So I had to go back and do it. It was not cute. So anyway, any questions, you guys? This concludes our orientation week. Do not try to have everything memorized, but you do wanna have a understanding of what's due for this week and we'll take it week by week by week. You can always text me questions. If it's something that, um, like I said, I feel like it needs to go into our, our canvas and I, I respond that way as well. Yes, ma'am, Miss uh, Twana, right? Twana, Twana. Yes, ma'am. 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 Yes, 
wanna. So, yes. So you said that you will break down the chapters for us for the exams. Yeah, will you post absolutely. that or? Well, actually, we can. We can. It's actually your chapters that include prior to the exam. So if you wanna, for example, let me just do it now. Let's do it now. So for example, week one, week two. Okay, week one, week two is covered. Let me see. Let me look. Let me see. Okay, it's week one, one, two, three, four, nine, three, twenty, one, three, one, and then so you have week one, week two, week three, for exam one. But again, I will, I will usually send out an email as well, but it's gonna be chapters one, two, three. And then unit uh, exam two will be week four. So all the readings for week four, all the readings for week five, all the readings for week six. And then unit th exam three is everything after. So seven, eight, and that's why, I mean, I don't know, eight is really hefty, but. You have okay. um, seven, eight, and then if you notice, let me, I'm, uh, if you notice the exam three, if you, I don't know, I just kind of look at everything. It's really seven and eight, all those chapters, because week nine doesn't have a chapter, right? So that's your exam three. I guess how they mix up work. Again, welcome to nursing. Any LPNs in the house? Yay, you heard my first heart. One, I, I see the Mercers. Uh, let me make this screen big so I can, uh, on my laptop, trying to see people's faces, trying to make it big. And it's not working. Okay, we have the Mercers. Who else do we have? I'm trying to see all you guys on the screen is not working. Just two. Anybody else want to shout out that they're LPN? No? Okay. Cassidy, are you raising your hand? Or are you just like, can we, are you? Yeah, I'm an LPN. Okay, awesome. You guys have my first heart. Well, no, my kids do. All right. So this concludes our class. Any burning questions, you guys? Looking forward to seeing your professional development plans and all of that fun stuff there. And if not, I will see you guys next week. Same time, same place for seven to come. Yes, who uh, am I talking to? Who's Greg this? Mercer. Yes, how may uh, I help you? On the Sanders NCLEX, uh, NCLEX questions, yeah. in some of the other classes we've taken before, if you say did 75 questions and got 50 right, they would go ahead and give you the 50. It's if, however you, is tailored this time. I had that question last semester. I'm not sure how they have it set up. But I think it's just, there's only 50 that they're gonna allow you for. So how okay. that factors into percentage wise is up to Saunders. I don't have any control over that. Um, but I have not seen people with more than 50 questions. So I don't think it's 75. I don't think it allows you to have that many. But again, it's up to, it's up to those guys. And really Gregory, all things, considering I would be more the Saunders factors in very little in the great right. scheme of life I would right. not be putting tons of effort into Saunders over everything else over the KGAs I mean if you if you do that and you get like an extra point one two five it's up to Saunders. Yeah. Whatever you transfer over to me, is, a gray book is, is, is what I ex accept. I have no control over that. I, I would be putting my efforts. Okay. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.
You're welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. I do have one question. Sure. For week two, the 50 NCLEX questions, it says the source will be provided. What, which ones are we doing? The 50 NCLEX questions? The, what's your question? What source? Oh, yeah. the, they're always going to be your textbook. Yeah, the text for that, the readings for that week. Yeah, that's your source for all of the NCLEX questions. I don't know why they put uh, it like that. Okay. You can have, that's what I was saying, and maybe I didn't say it. You can have your text out with you. I recommend with all of this stuff, Sims, Sons, all of this, have your textbook out with you because that's your reference besides lecture and all of that fun stuff. Thank you. We're done. Anybody have any questions? I, I like to be the last one to leave in case someone wants to ask me something privately. All right, bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. I'm ending it now.